What is up, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of The Tape Tomb, the show where we talk about some of my favorite horror tapes. I'm Larry Downs, and this week we make way for the king, the OG, the one that turned the world on its head for over 30 years and created the expectations for the 90-minute horror movie and then flopped its dick on the table saying, I'll go six minutes less. We're talking about 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. I know we've talked about the 2013 reboot of this movie, and as much as I love that flick, I can't deny it has nowhere near the cultural significance or historical importance that this film does in the world of movies. And although on the surface they're both about cannibalistic families running around chasing teenagers and killing them with chainsaws, we know as movie lovers that there is so much more going on under the skin. But before we rev up the chainsaws, let's get into the guts. This movie is directed by Mr. Toby Hooper, who would go on to create other masterpieces like Poltergeist and other fan favorites like Body Bags, The Fun House, and my personal favorite, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And to help write this movie, Toby called upon Kim Henkel, whose contributions in the series are credited for every movie following. And much like Chumbawamba, he felt like his one contribution was enough, and he dipped out. And to star in this movie, we have a bunch of nobodies. At the time of its creation, all of these people had little to no acting cred under their belt, but we have Marilyn Burns, Paul Partain, and playing the notorious Leatherface, Mr. Gunnar Hansen. But what's this movie about? Let's get revved up and find out. Roll the film. This movie starts out with our wholesome group of youngsters traveling down a road in Texas on their way to Sally and Franklin's grandfather's grave. It seems that it's been ritualistically desecrated, so they're going to check it out and they figure along the way they'll stop at the old house and make a vacation out of it. As they cruise down the road, they see a hitchhiker and they decide to do the right thing and give him a lift. As instant regret sets in, they realize that this hitchhiker is not the one they should have picked up. This guy's the genuine article, and after telling the gang all about his family and taking pictures of everyone trying to get some bread, he freaks them out and slashes Franklin's arm. They kick the hitchhiker out of the car, and after shaking off some of the hardcore willies, they decide to stop for gas. In typical horror movie fashion, the pumps are all out, and they're told that they'll have to wait or go find the sheriff. They decide to cruise along to the farmhouse and wait for the fuel to be dropped off. As they arrive at the property, it is not what they imagined. It's run down, the watering hole is dried up, and quite frankly, there's not much to do. After splitting up, Kirk and Pam hear a generator running at the farmhouse next door and decide to go investigate. But don't make it far before our man Leatherface finally steps onto the scene and captures his first victims. Night is falling and the teens are dropping one by one as they enter this gas-fueled nightmare with the Sawyers, a cannibalistic family that has taken over the area and wants these teens dead, so they can fill their stomachs for a couple of days, at least. What will Sally and Franklin do is they are now on the run from a mute chainsaw wielding monster who's out for that special ingredient for his secret family chili recipe? Hopefully you just need some cumin, but probably not in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Smut, sleeve, youth tainting poison? On the surface, these are all the things that you've heard about this movie. But as moviegoers and movie lovers, we know that there's so much more going on beyond the surface. Things that are grossly overlooked by uppity conservatives and your parents. This movie is a take on Reagan-era turn-of-the-century progression and all of the conflicts that come along with it. The Sawyer family is literally the last clinging-on remains of this small town that has been abandoned for the sake of automation. The same thing that those old people on Facebook are scared about with robots taking all of our jobs and whatnot. But anyway, the Sawyers and the setting are a physical representation of the old ways. So of course, it's no coincidence that our protagonists are a bunch of hippy-dippy youngsters that sound probably like a bunch of your friends today. These guys are the new generation, a new mindset, and our physical representation of what the old ways hate. CHANGE! We have a head-to-head -head battle between these two forces on the screen during a time when these conflicts were actually happening. Maybe not to this extreme, but it's art, you can figure it out. This movie is deep and there's so much more to say about it than what its reputation tells us. The real shame here is that this movie was blacklisted since its release for over 30 years in various parts of the globe, even though it doesn't show any nudity or gore. There's no nudity or gore in this movie? That's fucking right. It was all intentional. Everything is implied. Toby Hooper did this intentionally as he meticulously made 800 edits and did everything he could to secure a PG rating, which we are aware didn't happen. This isn't just one of the greatest horror movies of all time, it's one of the greatest movies of all time, period. It encompasses everything we love about the movie making process and the horror genre, earning it a VIP seat here at the Tape Tomb. Here's some facts about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The soundtrack to this movie contains no actual music other than the few tracks that they got copyrights for. It's all sounds that animals would hear in a slaughterhouse. 
Toby Hooper allowed Gunnar Hansen to develop Leatherface as he saw fit, under his supervision of course. Hansen decided that Leatherface was mentally handicapped and never learned to talk properly, so he went to a school for the mentally handicapped and watched how they moved and listened to them talk to get a feel for the character. He also tried his best to make his portrayal as non-offensive as he could. Many fans, including those who are mentally handicapped, say he succeeded. The worst part of all with the climactic dinner scene was the 110 degree Texas heat, plus the filming lights meant that all of the food on the table quickly rotted, and the room's poor ventilation made the reek even worse, raising it to genuinely health-threatening levels. Filming for 27 hours straight led to several of the actors suffering genuine sanity slippage and taking Toby Hooper's direction as meaning that they were really their characters. Not exactly the result you want when most of them were playing cannibalistic murderers. Edwin Neal, who played the hitchhiker, said the making of the film was more miserable than his service in Vietnam and said that he might kill director Toby Hooper if he ever saw him again. Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of The Tape Tomb. I've been your host, Larry Downs, and if you like this week's episode, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below or drop me a comment telling me about other movies I should talk about in future episodes. Also, make sure you tune in every other week to our sister series, Airlock Shock, starring Nick Haskin. He's always talking about some of the coolest and uncoolest sci-fi movies out there, just like we do horror here at The Tape Tomb. Once again, I'm your host, Larry Downs. Stay spooky, my friends, and we will see you in the sequel.